This is Valley News Live at noon. We start with a story that's new at noon. Students at Moorhead High School left class this morning as part of a statewide walkout for the killing of Dante Wright. Roughly 150 students from Moorhead High School walked out today and marched to Rumkey Park. Students spoke about the Black Lives Matter and Stop Asian Hate initiatives, calling for equality for all. Several also shared stories of what they've dealt with personally and in their own school. School officials say this was not a school organized event and absences will not be excused. Well, four people are facing drug charges after a large drug bust near Red Lake, Minnesota. Red Lake police conducted a search warrant at a home where they found uh, over two ounces of fentanyl, meth and marijuana. Police also confiscated cash, a scale and a rifle. Two men and two women between the ages of 25 and 29 were arrested. They are facing charges for narcotic sales and possession. Fargo police are investigating vandalism of a Christ statue in downtown Fargo. This is a scene outside of St. Mary's Cathedral on North Broadway. You can see someone poured black paint over the face of the statue. The Fargo Catholic Diocese says it likely happened late Friday night or early Saturday morning. They are looking for a way to restore the white marble without damaging it. If you know anything about what happened, you're asked to give police a call. Derek Chauvin could know his fate in the coming days. Closing arguments are today. Then jurors will decide if the former police officer is guilty of murder and the death of George Floyd. Any conviction must be unanimous. Officials fear almost a year of tension since the death of George Floyd could boil over again, depending on the verdict. National Guard troops are deployed throughout Minneapolis, working alongside state and city police officers, and the governor has requested more law enforcement from neighboring states. Was well, still a pretty breezy day, and we even got a chance to see some of those flurries this morning. So let's check in with First Alert Story Team Summer Snowbox to see what she expect this afternoon. Hey, Summer. Good afternoon, Brian. Yeah, we did see a few flurries. I think Lisa was mentioning this morning it was during the five o'clock hour, but in our tower cam time lapse, I have this started at eight o'clock this morning. Those clouds quickly filtered out. We saw blue sky for a couple of hours. But now we have started to see some cumulus clouds filter in and it was a chilly morning with some of those clear skies only in the teens for low temperatures up towards the Devil's Lake Basin. The warm spot on the map 30 degrees in Detroit Lakes. Now on visible satellite, I turn this one on so it's easier to see the cumulus clouds that have developed like little cotton balls in the sky, but still generally clear across much of northern Minnesota. But it's still a chilly day, only 35 in Grand Forks at this hour, 36 in in Grand Forks, 32 in Thief River Falls, 30 in Bemidji, 34 in Fergus Falls, and 32 in Devil's Lake. And it's still breezy as well. The wind is sustained out of the north in the teens and 20s across much of the region, gusting into the 20s to near 30 miles per hour. And we're going to remain chilly, Brian, for the rest of our day. But coming up in your hour by hour planner, I'll let you know when the wind finally diminishes and when we'll see the warmest day of the week. We we'll definitely have to stay tuned with you because flurries this morning and a little bigger flurries yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> that was interesting. Well, thanks, Summer. Well, a carjacking suspect has died after a shootout with police in southern Minnesota. It happened about three in the afternoon yesterday on Interstate 35 West near Burnsville. Police tried to pull over a white man in his 20s for driving a vehicle with stolen plates. The man crashed that car, then carjacked a woman at gunpoint. Police say he fired several shots at officers, crashed a second stolen car, and tried to carjack two other drivers. He was eventually shot by police and died at a nearby hospital. No officers were hurt. Well, police have identified three people involved in a crash between an SUV and two motorcycles. 26-year-old Ryan Rosdahl of Fargo was driving one of the bikes and is seriously hurt. 22-year-old Alexander Boschnem of Fargo was driving the other vehicle and also was hurt. The Highway Patrol says both men were driving on 10th Street North near 15th Avenue when an SUV started to cross the road. The motorcycles ran into the vehicle. 19-year-old Jacob Shelver of Fargo was driving the SUV. Neither he nor his passenger was hurt. New information in a deadly crash over the weekend. An arrest warrant is now issued for the driver of the car that hit and killed a seven year old girl in Rolette County. Joshua Frostenson has been charged with hit and run and manslaughter. Both are class B felonies. Now, the North Dakota Highway Patrol says Frostenson was driving when he came up upon a group of children crossing Highway 281 near Dunseft. Troopers say one of the kids was hit, but the driver took off from the scene. 
The seven year old girl was taken to the Belcourt Hospital, then airlifted to Minot, where she died. Americans 16 and older are eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine starting today. This comes as over half of the country's adult population has now received at least one shot. Now, according to the CDC, almost 130 million people 18 or older have received at least one dose. That's slightly more than 50% of the total adult population. Today is the first day of the mass vaccination clinic in Sisseton. It's a partnership between the Sisseton Wapiton Oyate tribe and FEMA. It's happening now until four this afternoon at the Buffalo Lake Lanes Dakota Connection parking lot. This is a public event and anyone ages 18 or older is welcome, regardless of Indian Health Services eligibility. The event is also happening from 10 to 4 tomorrow. Well, starting tomorrow, Essential Health is accepting unscheduled walk-ins at the vaccination center located at the former Gordman's building in South Fargo. Until further notice, you can go on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursdays from 1 to 7 and no appointment is needed. You do not need to be an essential health patient to take advantage of this opportunity. The Lake Agassiz Regional Library is trying to get the community reading to help celebrate their 60 year anniversary. The challenge is called 60 books for 60 years. All you have to do is read 60 books in 2021, fill out a reading log and then turn it in when you're done. All it takes is reading a book a week or listening to an audiobook daily. Organizers say reading keeps your mind active and can keep you, help you find relief from day to day stresses. It's just a break. It gives your brain an escape, especially lately. Escape is good. <laughs> um, give yourself a rest and um, kind of get lost and then learn something new. Now the Morehead Library is back to operating at normal hours. And if you don't feel comfortable coming in, you can check out books curbside or online from your home. Well, here at Valley News Live, we are thrilled to announce the launch of a new network for country music fans. The new channel is called Circle. Now, Circle is a new country lifestyle network that features the best of country music, hit TV shows, and performances from the Grand Ole Opry. The network officially launches today here at KVLY. It's easy to see the Circle Entertainment Network. Now, for over-the-air viewers, simply rescan your TV and look for a KVLY 11.4. Cable and satellite subscribers should check their local listings. Circle is a joint venture between our parent company, Gray Media Incorporated, and Ryman Hospitality Properties. Well, coming up at noon, cheers from NASA as they receive confirmation that the Angra 2 d helicopter successfully flies on Mars. And what will the weather be like after we started off pretty chilly? We have the answer to that question up next with Summer Snowball.